So I'm sure all of us have hobbies. And we all like doing these hobbies, but for the most part, they don't really bear any fruit. They don't uh, yield anything when you're done doing them. And some people might even say that these hobbies are useless. There is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should, be done, should not be done at all. This is a quote by Drucker, or Drucker, not quite sure. But this quote is really vague, and really up to interpretation because everybody thinks something is useless, and some people might think that thing isn't as useless as the other person thinks. For example, uh, playing video games. Playing, uh, playing video games, even sports, and acting, is doing things people find fun for entertainment might be seen as useless by other people. Video games, of course, really don't yield much, they're just for fun. But nowadays there are big competitions where people get together and play video games against each other for money and awards and stuff. And that's, that's a lot of fun. You, be, either being there, participating, or just watching, you can find a lot of enjoyment doing that. So is that useless? Uh, playing sports, the same thing applies. It's fun to do for some people, it's fun to watch for a lot of people, but the same thing. It could be useless to some people, but who knows. And then acting as well. Acting is just another thing we do for entertainment. We do it for movies, TV shows, for plays, and millions of people see those every day, and it gets billions of dollars of revenue. And there are huge award shows for all these actors and the things they've done. And they get praised and awarded for their work. So doing all these things that we enjoy so much, is that useless? Well, that's up for you to decide. Thank you. All right, I think the example of hobbies is a way of talking about how some people uh, use their time in a way that others might perceive as being wasteful is, is okay. There's a relationship to the subject that you're talking about there. You do identify the quote that you were referring to. I thought that was pretty good. I wasn't exactly sure what your point was going to be. It sounded to me like you did have something kind of insightful to say that one person's useful waste of time is another person's you know, valuable uh, insight in themselves or a uh, pleasure that uh, is meaningful to them. Um, I kind of get the impression that that's what you were trying to say. I think it needs to be a lot clearer. And speaking of being a lot clearer, I did not realize when you were presenting it that that was a preview, and I barely realized it as you were getting into it that there was a structure, but I do see a preview and a structure. It's just not very... It, yeah, it, it's not a very identifiable, because it sounds like you're just casually talking about it. Like, it could be if you play video games or sports or acting that you would feel this way. And I'm going, well, yeah, okay, I could see that. And then suddenly, the next thing I know, you're talking about video games. I'm going, oh, well, he's going back over the same point again. And then you start talking about sports. And, Whoa, wait a second, that was a preview, and this is the structure. You need to kind of let us know those things. So 
you, I, I, you've got a casual sentence that you have at the beginning. You say, and I'll give you an example. I, I got three different examples of things that people do that sometimes others think are useless, but have some value to them. Playing video games, playing sports, and uh, being an actor. And so let me tell you about those kinds of things. If you say it that way, everybody knows that's what the structure is going to be. As it was, it just seemed like it was a passive sentence that really didn't mean much, although I can now tell that it was meant to be an active sentence that identifies those points. So you need to kind of emphasize that a little bit more. And then when you're in the body of the speech, do the same sort of thing. Give us some transitions from each point to the next instead of just kind of wandering into that subject. Because that's, that's you know, transition language will help the audience know hey, this is an idea, this is a major point, this is something that you should be paying attention to. It's not just something that I'm tossing off casually, it's something where there's going to be some content developed around it. Content needs to be a little bit thicker. I think that that's where it's problematic. So even though I do see in hindsight the preview and what the structure is, I never see the content developed very much, just a little bit. You know, playing video games, hey, you could win prizes and make money doing that. Okay, well, how likely is that for most people? Probably not highly likely. So does it mean that it's only valuable to those people that win the, um, you know, I don't know, whatever the name of those contests are. What's the game that they're always playing that people watch folks actually do online? Uh, That's a couple. Yeah, but, there, <laughs> but there's one like, like in Korea, it's like the whole country shuts down to watch 20 hours of this kind of stuff. Yeah, something like that. You know, I don't know. It's just a tell me that story. You know, something like that. But the truth of the matter is, maybe you've got your own story about playing a video game where it was valuable to you, or you've got a friend who says, you know, he's never going to win anything, but he does take some pride in the fact that he's good at the game that he plays at home. So he's not going to make a million dollars. He's not going to win the international contest. But boy, he can kick my ass on a regular basis, or you know, he's the champion of his league, or something like that, or at least he's competitive, and he feels there's value in that. Just some something to give it some more substance. Yours is kind of abstract. And the same thing is true with the other two points as well. Uh, presentation stuff is mostly solid. I mean, you project your voice pretty well. You uh, are pretty fluent when you're speaking. Um, your facial expressions look engaged. Your eye contact with the audience is excellent, except uh, maybe a little bit more with me than everybody else, because you have a tendency uh, probably to see me in the camera. But uh, they're nice folks over there. You could talk to them occasionally, uh, you know, kind of divert your attention there. But I didn't see that as being a big problem. You do have a tendency as a gesture, though, to, I don't know, there's got to be a name for it. It's like the, not the crucifixion position, but it is a Jesus position. You know, come to me, my children. You've got your hands out there like this, and you, and you do this sort of thing. You know, with, with open hands, I'm speaking to you. you know, something like that. And so that seems a little repetitive. In, in the two and a half minutes that you're talking, I think that was up there for half of the time that you were speaking. So that's, you've got to be conscious of doing those kinds of things. That's what we're saying. That's the way you pay attention to them is by becoming aware of them. All right, thank you. I hope it doesn't sound